Inshallah, we'll be reading from verse number one of Surah Fussilat, also known as Surah Hamim as Sajda. The reason why it is called Surah Fussilat is because of the word Fussilat that comes in the first few verses, and some know it as Hamim as Sajda because it starts with Hamim and it has a Sajda Tilawa in it. Page number 473 of the Sahih International Translation. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم حاميم تنزيل من الرحمن الرحيم كتاب فصلت آياته قرآنا عربيا لقوم يعلمون بشيرا ونذيرا فأعرض أكثرهم فهم لا يسمعون وقالوا قلوبنا في أكنة مما تدعونا إليه وفي آذاننا وقر وفي آذاننا وقر ومن بيننا وبينك حجاب فاعمل إننا عاملون قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فاستقيموا إليه واستغفروه وويل للمشركين الذين لا يؤتون الزكاة وهم بالآخرة هم كافرون إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات لهم أجر غير ممنون قل أئنكم لتكفرون بالذي خلق الأرض في يومين وتجعلون له أندادا ذلك رب العالمين وجعل فيها رواسي من فوقها وبارك فيها وقدر فيها أقواتها وقدر فيها أقواتها في أربعة أيام سواء للسائلين ثم استوى إلى السماء وهي دخان فقال لها وللأرض اتيا طوعا أو كرها قالتا أتينا طائعين فقضاهن سبع سماوات في يومين وأوحى في كل سماء أمرها وزينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وحفظا ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم فإن أعرضوا فقل أنذرتكم صاعقة مثل صاعقة عاد وثمود إذ جاءتهم الرسل من بين أيديهم ومن خلفهم ألا تعبدوا إلا الله قالوا لو شاء ربنا لأنزل ملائكة فإنا بما أرسلتم به كافرون فأما عاد فاستكبروا في الأرض بغير الحق وقالوا من أشد منا قوة أولم يروا أن الله الذي خلقهم هو أشد منهم قوة وكانوا بآياتنا يجحدون فأرسلنا عليهم ريحا صرصرا في أيام نحسات لنذيقهم لنذيقهم عذاب الخزي في الحياة الدنيا ولعذاب الآخرة أخزى وهم لا ينصرون وأما ثمود فهديناهم فاستحبوا العمى على الهدى 
فأخذتهم صاعقة العذاب الهون بما كانوا يكسبون ونجينا الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise him upon all conditions, we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, may Allah bless them and bless every one of us, Amin. My mothers and sisters, before I start the translation of this particular surah, I need to make mention of an interesting story regarding the recitation of this beautiful surah at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had informed the people of Mecca of him being a prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having been instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tell the people to worship Allah alone and to stop worshipping the idols and other deities that they worshipped besides Allah and to prepare for the day they died and to prepare for the meeting with Allah and the life after and to be careful of the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At that time, the people of Quraysh were divided into a few groups. A small number of them initially was from amongst those who accepted the message. And we know Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, and various others who had accepted Islam in the early days. But the larger group of the powerful people of Quraysh did not immediately accept. Some of them never ever accepted. But from amongst them we know the some names like Abu Jahl, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Abu Sufyan, perhaps a little bit younger than Abu Jahl, Umayyah ibn Khalaf, and so on. So they thought that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was known as a very honest person, very upright, beloved amongst the people of Quraysh before he instructed them regarding the goodness and the revelation. They thought that perhaps he is only after power, position, wealth, and maybe a few other things. And this is the problem to this day when it comes to encouraging people to do good. Immediately people take a back footing. They don't want to hear. When you tell someone, listen, my sister, you need to read your salah. You need to make sure that you dress appropriately. You need to make sure you worship Allah and Allah alone. You need to make sure you understand that the day you are lowered into your grave, it will only be you and Allah. And you need to prepare for that day. So people sometimes don't like it. And sometimes they think, who is this person trying to tell me? Who is this big boss here? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive that type of thinking. May he not make us from amongst those. We should be such that when someone reminds us, no matter how bitter the pill is to swallow, if they are right, take it, digest it. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you, sister. Pray for me. You know, I really appreciate it. Or thank you, my brother. I really appreciate it. Pray for me. Allah make me strong. Allah guide me and grant me goodness. Alhamdulillah. But at the same time, those people had felt that this man, even though what he is saying does have some form of merit, they knew it. Deep down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ If you were to ask them, who created the skies and the earth? In another place, who created you? مَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ They would say, Allah. Allah means the one, the supreme, the creator. Subhanallah. So they used to acknowledge the existence of Allah, but they used to worship with Allah so many other things. So it's not like they never understood who Allah was, and it's not like they never turned in worship to Allah. When they were in dire straits, they turned to Allah. But they called out to their idols as well, and they associated partners with Allah. That is what is known as shirk. Shirk meaning association of partnership with Allah. So... What happened is they decided to make up a delegation to send to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or at least one person. And they said, go and offer him, make him an offer. We don't want him to come and uh, compete with us in position and in wealth and in women and in everything else, you know. So go and give him the offer, make him that offer. And I'm sure he will take it. Now, sometimes, you know, those who are involved in worldly materialism and drowning in it, if you were to make them an offer to say, look, we give you 
uh, $500,000 and we want you to back off. They might say no. We offer you a million, we want you to back off. They will say no. We, we offer you 10 million, we want you to back off. No. We offer you 100 million, we want you to back off. They start scratching their heads. Why? Because, hey, the figure, 100 million. Well, for Zimbabweans, to be honest with you, it's a small figure. You know, we, we're used to that, mashallah. So, subhanallah, sometimes those who are drowning in the world, they would accept an offer made of a handsome amount or a figure. But with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, listen to what happened. According to some narrations, Utbah ibn Rabi'ah was sent to him. And he was one of the leaders of Quraysh. And he went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the mission. What was the mission? The idea was to go to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and say, listen, you know what? We're making you such and such offer. And in return, we want to... Uh, you to keep quiet and don't talk about the idols and don't talk about the worship and don't tell people about how deviant they are and so on. Leave it, forget about it. So they went to him. So he comes to Muhammad ﷺ and he started telling him, he told him. Some of what he said was, O oh Muhammad, if you would like position, we make you our leader. If you would like wealth, we give you as much as you want. If you would like women, we can get you married to whomever you would like from amongst us and how many ever you would like from amongst us and so on and so on. And we make this offer to you and we make that offer to you. But we would like you to be quiet. Stop saying that revelation is coming to you from heaven and stop saying X, Y, and Z and whatever else. And he kept on talking. And when he spoke and spoke and spoke, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Asked him a question. What was the question? Are you finished? Have you said what you wanted to? He said, yes. He says, Wallahi, I swear by Allah. If you were to put the sun in my right hand, which means you give me everything and the moon in my left, absolutely everything. You know, the power is depicted by the sun. The beauty of the world depicted by the moon. If you were to give me absolutely everything and you ask me to remain silent, I will not. And then he started reading verses of the Qur'an. Which were the verses? These were the verses. So he started reading the beginning of Surah Fussilat from Hamim. And Muhammad ﷺ was reading and Utbah ibn Rabi'ah is listening. And he was one of the main you know, chiefs of Quraysh who was against Muhammad ﷺ. He's listening to these verses. They were powerful, piercing his ears. He knew exactly what was being read to him. And he knew this man is unlettered. And he knew that this is the truth. And it started having an effect, an impact on him until he got to a certain point. And inshallah, I will tell you exactly where that point is when we get to it. And he immediately put his hand on the mouth of Muhammad wasallam and said, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to hear more. And then he ran away. And he went back to Quraysh and told them that, you know, I've heard verses that are powerful. They cannot be the speech of man. They have to be something that is heavenly. They cannot be the speech of man. It is so powerful. It has a sweetness in it. It attracts. It has full of, it's full of meaning and so on. They looked at him and they said, we sent you to do something and you are coming back trying to convince us that what he has brought is the truth. So immediately Utbah ibn Rabi'a says, no, 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 no. I'm not trying to convince. I'm only telling you something. You know, I'm only telling you what happened. But I'm definitely not a part of it and I don't want to accept it and so on. And from this we learn that those who know the truth sometimes, due to their arrogance, they do not accept it. They deny it, but deep down they know that this is actually true and that is false. They know it. But because of their environment, the people around them, the fear of loss of something, maybe family members, maybe position in society, maybe post at work, whatever else because of the fear of all these things they deny they don't accept the deen that that we learn from this in fact what we learn from this is that whenever there is the truth it's just a test from Allah if you accept it and lose everything in return in terms of this world Allah says we will replenish it or we will grant it to you not only double but as many fold as possible in the dunya as well as in the akhirah in this world and the next especially in Jannah Allah will provide and Allah gives that which is without even taking measure of it. No measure to say, okay, take two kilos, take three kilos, five kilos. No, what you want, yours, take it. Subhanallah. So what were these verses? Obviously powerful verses. Hamim tanzilun min ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Kitabun fussilat ayatuhu Qur'anan arabiyya Allahu Akbar. 
Listen to these verses. Allah says, Hamim. This is a revelation from the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, which means the one whose mercy encompasses everything, the believers and the disbelievers, and all creatures of Allah, encompassed by the mercy of Allah. It is because of the mercy of Allah that we are in existence and we are being allowed to worship Him. And at the same time, the disbelievers are being given in terms of this worldly life by the mercy of Allah. So Allah has mercy on all His creation. And this is why my mothers and sisters, a little point we can quickly draw from this, that you know, we need to also have a quality of mercy within us when it comes to the animals as well some people think you know a dog is a dog d-o-g you can kick kick it and you can do whatever you want not at all you can actually earn paradise through being kind to a dog the same applies na'udhu billah na'udhu billah may allah protect us all to a pig the fact that a pig is haram to consume does not make it permissible to kick and to abuse and to torture no not at all. It's an, it's an animal and it's a creature of Allah. It's a pig. It will remain dirty in its own right or according to us. And it will remain something we are not allowed to consume that does not give us the right to be cruel to it. Not at all. You cannot torture it and so on. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling us that He is entirely merciful and specifically merciful. Entirely merciful upon all of His creatures and specifically upon the believers. Then the, the verses continue. A book whose verses have been detailed an Arabic Quran for the people who know as a giver of good tidings and a warner, but most of them turn away so they do not hear. So Allah is saying, this is a book. Kitabun. Fussilat ayatuhu. This is the book. The verses have been detailed. You know, fussilat, referring to tafsil, the detail. <laughs> So it's a book that has a lot of detail in it. And it's an Arabic Quran. Quran is something that is recited. Qara'a means to read, to recite. In fact, the proper translation of Qara'a is to read. Tala yatlu is to recite. Utlu means to recite. And some people differentiate between recitation and reading. Reading is with understanding. And recitation sometimes is just to recite. People may or may not comprehend that. So with the Quran, primarily we are supposed to read. Iqra. Reading meaning read with understanding. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Quranan Arabian. Quran, that which is read and understood. That's the meaning of Quran. So here Allah is saying, it's an Arabic Quran for those or for the people who know. لِقَوْمٍ يَعْلَمُونَ For the people who know. بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا It has good news and a warning. بَشِيرًا وَنَذِيرًا So the Quran has in it good news and a warning. Glad tidings for those who do good and a warning for those who do bad. And Muhammad wasallam, who is the bearer or who came with the Quran is also a messenger who is also known as مُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا The one who brings good news for those who do good and he brings a warning for those who do bad. Now the Quran does not say he brings bad news for those who do bad. Do you know why? The Quran only says a warning for those who do bad. Because if there is bad news for those who do bad, that would mean there is no hope for them. But if there is a warning for those who do bad, it means they can turn back. And it means they can come onto the path once again, seeking Allah's forgiveness. And there will be good news for those who have been bad, but they've turned to Allah in forgiveness. And now they're no longer bad. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to turn to Him. And may we be from amongst those who take heed. Amen. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this Qur'an, it is quite clear for the people who know, who have knowledge. You need to expand your knowledge. You need to use your brain. You need to understand the gift that Allah has bestowed you with. He wants you to use that to look deeper into why He has made you and what He expects from you. Rabbi al-A'la. Subhanallah. So Allah says, as giver of good tidings and a warner, but most of them turn away so they do not hear. Now, at the back of your mind, you can just picture Utbah ibn Rabi'ah listening to these verses. And he's being told that this is a Qur'an that is clear in the Arabic language. For those who know, giver of good tidings and a warner. But most of them turn away so they do not hear. And they say, this is what the Qur'an is saying. And they say, who are they? The kuffar of Quraysh, including Utbah ibn Rabi'ah and the others. What do they say? Our hearts are within coverings, which means they are screened from that to which you invite us. 
We don't understand what you're calling us towards. That's what they used to say. We've got no clue what you're saying. Astaghfirullah. And deep down they knew. And they knew it was the truth. So they used to say, our hearts are screened. They are closed. They are covered from that which you are inviting us. And in our ears is a deafness. We have a deafness in our ears. We don't comprehend this that you are saying. And between us and you is a partition. Is a screen, is a hijab. وَمِن بَيْنِنَا وَبَيْنِكَ hijab. Hijab means a cover. So there is a cover between you and us. So do what you want. Indeed, we are doing as well. So work. We are working. فَعْمَلْ إِنَّنَا amilun. Do. We will also do. Then we will see what happens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is responding now to that statement of theirs. Verse number 6, Allah says, Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I am only a man like you. Subhanallah. Qul innama ana basharun mithlukum. This is the Quran. This is Allah speaking. Allah is saying, Say, I am only a man like you, to whom it has been revealed that your God is but one God. Allah is one. There is none worthy of worship besides your maker. Who made you is worthy of worship. Everything else is made. Not worthy of worship. So do not worship me. Do not worship anyone else or anything else. You worship your God, your maker alone. That is your test. When you go lowered into your grave, it's you and your maker. Subhanallah. مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تُرْجُمَانٌ Every single one of you. There is not a single one of you but Allah will speak to you directly without a translator in between. Prepare for that day. May Allah make it easy for us. So here Allah is saying, Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I am only a man like you. The difference is, revelation comes to me. I am a man like you to whom it has been revealed that your God is but one God. So take a straight course to him and seek his forgiveness. فَاسْتَقِيمُوا إِلَيْهِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ Become steadfast for his sake, to him, upon that path. And ask his forgiveness, ask him to forgive you. Whatever you've done in the past, he will forgive. That is Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And destruction be upon those who associate others with Allah. وَيْلٌ لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ Destruction be upon the mushrikeen. Now sometimes people get a bit agitated when we talk about mushrikeen. But Allah is saying clearly in so many verses in the Quran that destruction be upon the mushrikeen. So it should be one of the main topics of discussion that we have is how to protect ourselves from destruction. And destruction you will save yourself if you protect yourself from association of partnership with Allah. There we are. So this is why Muhammad wasallam says, I am a human being just like you are. And revelation has come to me to instruct you to worship Allah alone. And a warning that destruction be upon those who associate partners with Allah. May Allah protect us. You know my mothers and sisters, we need to ponder very very deeply over verses of this nature. Because this is the crux of the message of Muhammad sallallahu He came in and he was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the best of creation. The highest of all creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most noble of all the messengers. To us, to remind us. To give us a warning. And to tell us, do you know what? Your success in this world and the next lies in worshipping your maker and him alone. None else. So this is Allah. Verse number 7, Allah says, Those who do not give zakah, and in the hereafter, they are disbelievers indeed, those, and in the hereafter, they are disbelievers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing those who associate partners with Allah. Some of their qualities are that they do not give zakah. Zakah refers to the arms and the charities that are applicable in Islam, and I'm sure we would know them that are given. Some people feel lazy. Some people don't like to calculate. Some people don't like to give it out. Some people think, you know, I'm going to lose out if I give. Some people think, well, you know, now if I keep on giving, it's going to deplete my uh, core amount, the capital that I have, and so on. All these are lame excuses. Allah says, we gave you, we will provide for you. You know, we've given you, we will provide for you. Do not 
present lame excuses. We are only asking you to give from what we gave you. You know, it's like when you're testing a small child and you give the child five sweets and you say, now give me one. And the child says, no. No. And then you say, give me one. No. Allahu Akbar. And imagine if you give the child five sweets and you say, give me one. And the child gives you two. What will you do? Perhaps you might give the child ten sweets the next time. Well, this is how we operate with little babies. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabbul Alameen. He does not need anything from us. He's just tapping us by saying, whatever you've got, I've given you. Just give back two and a half percent to those who are needy. To those whom perhaps we haven't given or we've chosen to give them through you. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us generous. My mothers and sisters, we never ever lose when we give out a charity. Never ever lose. No way. Some people ask, you know, I've got gold. Now how do I have to pay it when I'm not liquid? Well, make it liquid, subhanAllah. Make it liquid and I can tell you how to do it. You can heat it. Gold becomes liquid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Uh, my mothers and sisters, there's no excuse not to pay zakah. Zakah is something that is... Uh, compulsory. But at the same time, zakah is meant to also be the cleansing of the heart. The cleansing of a person's character and conduct is also known as zakah. Those who do not cleanse themselves are known as those who do not give zakah. Those who are not clean, pure, within. So part of it is also to clean your heart, to rid it of bad habits, to become closer to Allah. That is part of zakah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cleanse us as well. This is why Allah says in the Quran, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ Take from their wealth that, that charity that will cleanse them. So the charity is meant to cleanse us. We do not cling to the dunya, to this worldly life in a way that makes us forget the hereafter. Every cent you give as a charity would actually be an investment for your palace of Jannah. May Allah grant us Jannah. So this is charity. This is cha something charitable. And if you would like Jannah, you need to also clean your heart, rid it of bad qualities, jealousy, hatred, enmity, envy, and so on. All those qualities that are unacceptable. You know, people become engrossed in backbiting, gossip, slander, troublemaking. You know, they know people that this one is a troublemaker. Oh, that means the zakah is not right. Something wrong with zakah. Cleanse yourself. We must be known as peacemakers, mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us make pieces of cake, inshallah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us make peace across the globe. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us in every single way. My mothers and sisters, look at the beauty of the Qur'an. How beautiful. Allah is uh, warning the people of Quraysh. But at the same time, there's a lesson for us in this. To say, look, Allah is saying, those who associate partners with Allah, they don't even give their zakah. And they don't even believe in the hereafter. They don't believe in the hereafter. And this verse is so deep that it means if the people do not believe in the hereafter, they won't give zakah, they won't worship Allah alone. They will think we are only in this world in order to enjoy. So they believe in YOLO, you only live once. So that's why they keep on doing whatever they want to in the world because they don't believe in the hereafter. And if you take it from the back, the minute people believe in the hereafter, it puts everything into perspective and everything falls into place. Zakah falls into place, worshipping Allah alone falls into place, cleansing yourself and purifying yourself falls into place, fulfilling your obligations falls into place, T taking heed falls into place. Everything comes in. Why? Because you believe in the hereafter. You believe that there is something to come after my this life here, which is actually eternal, which will be determined by the way I've led this particular life. May Allah make it easy for us. Wallahi, we are human beings. We've been created in a unique, sophisticated way. And that unique, sophisticated way is such that it would require a person to understand what belief is all about, to look deeply into what death is all about, and to ask so many questions before they would arrive at a conclusion that, you know what? This life cannot be it. It cannot be the only thing we are in existence for. We cannot have just been created in order to live for a few years. There is so much oppression here. There is so much of test here. Every year, everyone is being tested. Little kids who are just born are dying. And people who are slightly older are dying of sickness and various other reasons. And there is so much chaos across the globe. This cannot be the eternal place that people are supposed to be living in. No, there is something bigger than this. The picture is far bigger. So this is the preparation, inshallah, for the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds for them is a reward uninterrupted. 
an uninterrupted reward along as stretched as they would like it. So those who believe and do righteous deeds. Now this is divided into two. You have to believe and it's not good enough to say I'm a believer. So many people say we are Muslim but they're horrible people, terrible people, far away from Islam. So to utter a statement is one thing. To say you're a believer is one thing. But those who truly believe, it's in the heart, number one. Number two is on top of that they prove it by doing righteous deeds for the sake of Allah. So when you get up early morning for salah, that's between you and Allah. Well, the struggle that you are going through to please Allah, He knows and you know. People might look at you and think, oh, this person here is far from Islam. And people might look at others and think, oh, this person is such a good Muslim. Only Allah knows how deep each person is. Only Allah knows how close each person is to Him. So it's a struggle. It's a continuous struggle. Each one tries in his own way. Allah has blessed you with things unique to you. You have a combination of gifts from Allah that is unique. Perhaps many others may not have what you have. Use what Allah has blessed you with in order to gain closeness to Allah. In order to gain closeness to Allah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meets you, you can say, Ya Allah, you blessed me with X, Y and Z. And I used X, Y and Z to try and get as close as I could to you. But I have weaknesses when it comes to A, B and C. May Allah forgive us. And someone else might be able to, to you know, please Allah through A, B and C. But they have weaknesses when it comes to X, Y and Z. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, You believe and do righteous deeds. You will have a reward that is uninterrupted. Then, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say to them, Do you indeed disbelieve in he who created the earth in two days and attribute to him equals? Do you really associate partners with the one who created the earth in two days? That is the Lord of the worlds. How can you associate partners with Allah, with the Lord of the worlds? The one who created not just you, but he created the world, the earth, entire creation. And the next verse continues. And he placed on it, which means on earth, firmly set mountains over its surface. And he blessed it and determined therein its creatures, its sustenance. In four days without distinction for the information of those who ask, those who want to know. Subhanallah. And then he continues to say, Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke and said to it and to the earth, Come into being willingly or by compulsion. They said, We have come willingly. So when Allah instructed the earth, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructed the heavens and the earth, they accepted willingly. And Allah said, you come either willingly or by compulsion. They said, we will come willingly. But what happens to man? Allah has instructed man and man says, no, I won't. I'm still not old enough. I'm still young. I need to enjoy a little bit before I come. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us really. Who knows when we are going to die? Wallahi, death is a whisker away, just a whisker away. And we don't even know. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the next verse Allah says, And he completed them as seven heavens within two days, and inspired or made known in each heaven its command. He instructed, he just dishes out a command because he is the creator. He makes, he made, he instructs, he creates from nothing, zero. You know, we, we can... We can actually invent by transforming one of the creation of Allah to another perhaps or, or by modifying one creature of Allah to another. And that's called an invention. But none of us can create from nothing. You know, they say, oh, the magicians do this and do that. All that is tale. All that is just, you know, quick for the eye. Sometimes assistance from the jinn kind and so on. So they make, they make it look like it's not there when it's actually there. And then they show it to you by making it appear. And we think, wow, that's not a God. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It's Allah who says, be, and it is. If we say, be, nothing will be. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So this is Allah. Now, just to pause for a minute. We all know the Quran says that Allah created the heavens and the earth in six days. Right? 
The seventh day was never for a rest, as some religions believe. Uh, Allah says, we created it in six days and we did not get tired, so we don't need a rest. مَا مَسَّنَا مِنْ لُغُوبِ Allah says, it's an insult and a, to Allah, blaspheme, to say, the Lord of the worlds tired? أعوذ بالله. So there is no tiredness. The seventh day is not a day that Allah rested in, no. But He created it in six days. And if you add the days here, it seems like it comes up to eight. So what is it? Because Allah says we created the earth in two days and then we put on the heaven or then Allah says we have uh, placed you know the mountains and whatever else in it four days and then two days the heavens. So four plus two plus two is eight. Well if you read carefully it's not four plus two plus two. Allah says the earth created in two days. The four days is in inclusive of the two days. So it makes it four plus two, which is six. No contradiction. Because whatever Allah is speaking about the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, four, it's four days. The two is included in the four, and then you add another two for the heavens. So four, the earth and, and whatever else was put on it and so on, and two, the heavens. Four plus two is six. Uh, some people say, no, there's a contradiction in the Quran. No, read it carefully. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not say eight days ever. And this does not add up to eight days. For example, a person says, and I'm going to give you a totally different example, but just to bring it closer to the mind. If someone says, you know what? It took me two days to panel beat this vehicle, for example, right? And then they say, and in total, it took me four days to get everything in it and to deliver it. Okay, does that mean six days? No, in total four days. It's quite clear. That means those two were for panel beating and the other two was to get everything done and ready and so on. So in four days we delivered it. There you are. So how can you say, oh, that's six days, but they handed it to you in four days. Allahu Akbar. So there are people who do pick on this verse or these verses of the Quran and they say there's a contradiction. Allah says six days in so many places and here he says eight days. Where does he say eight days? Show it to me, please. It's not there. So read, read correctly. Ask those with knowledge if you don't know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deeper understanding. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. No flaws, no errors in the Quran. Subhanallah. That's a challenge. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And he completed them as seven heavens within two days, and inspired or made known in each heaven its command. And we adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, which are stars for beauty and as protection. That is the determination of the exalted in might, the all-knowing. This is Allah. So these stars, Allah says, we just beautified the sky for you. Uh, you know, for protection, meaning Allah uses them. The angels will pelt those devils who try to uh, go beyond certain limits set for them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, we need to understand it's beautification for us. And also guidance in the sense that at night, when you don't know where you're going and you don't have Garmin and GPS and so on, you perhaps might want to know which star is in which direction so that you know that you're roughly going into that particular direction when you're going to a certain town and you're stuck at night. Allahu Akbar. I think we do not have knowledge of the stars, including myself. If you showed me the stars at night, I might be able to show you a few and tell you about just a few of them, but I don't know much. Really. And the truth is, we should be knowing a little bit. This is the North Star, this is, you know, whatever else, this one, this one, and these three are the sisters and whatever else. I don't know why they don't call them brothers. But my mothers and sisters, something's amazing. We should be knowing a little bit. But at the, a few years back, just a few decades back, our grandfathers knew exactly which direction, which star was, and in which time of the month, and so on. Everything they were fully clued up, subhanAllah. But with us, no. The battery goes flat, you have to stop, charge your battery, because why? The garment is not working. The auntie who shows us the way is suddenly silent. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. My mothers and sisters, this is the path, Siratul Mustaqim, the straight path of Allah. For that, the Quran has come. The greatest of all messengers have come. Let's follow it. May Allah grant us Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that after that, and these are the verses. Now, when this verse was read, verse number 13, this is when Utbah ibn Rabi'ah put his mouth on, uh, sorry, put his hand on the mouth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he read, فَإِنْ أَعْرَضُوا فَقُلْ أَنْذَرْتُكُمْ صَائِقَةً مِثْلَ صَائِقَةِ عَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ But if they turn away, after we've told them all this, if they turn away, then say, 
I have warned you of the thunderbolt, like the thunderbolt that struck Ad and Samud. Immediately, the man did not want to hear what that thunderbolt was all about. So what did he do? He placed his hands over the mouth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the blessed lips, and he said, keep quiet, stop, 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 and he ran away. Because he didn't want to hear what that punishment was. Let us hear what the punishment was. In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that occurred. The thunderbolt that occurred when the messengers had come to them before them and after them saying, Worship none except Allah. They said, If our Lord had willed, He would have sent down angels. So indeed we, in that which you have been sent, are disbelievers. We don't believe that which you have been sent because if Allah really wanted us to believe, why would He send human beings like us? He would send angels. So in another place Allah says in the Quran, if there were angels walking on earth, we would have sent angels to remind the other angels. But because there are human beings walking on earth, we sent human beings to remind them. Subhanallah. Then in the next verse, Allah says, As for Ad, they were arrogant upon the earth without right. And they said, Who is greater than us in strength? Did they not consider that Allah who created them in the first place was greater than them in strength? But they were rejecting our signs. They were rejecting our commands, our instructions, our verses. So we sent upon them a screaming wind during days of misfortune to make them taste the punishment of disgrace in this worldly life. But the punishment of the hereafter is even more disgracing and they will not be helped. So Allah says, those who rejected from Ad, we sent them a thunderbolt, we sent them a loud scream, violent winds. And Allah says, and in the hereafter, we have something even more painful for them, waiting. Now, obviously, this is a deterrent for us. And it was a deterrent for the people of Quraysh. They did not want to hear. Because they would suffer sleepless nights. And they did suffer sleepless nights. Then Allah says, and as for Thamud, the people of Salih alayhi salam, the, 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 the nation we spoke about just now was Ad. Ad where Hud alayhi salam was sent. Hud. Hud, a beautiful name. H-O-O-D. You know they say Robin Hood, but not Hud. It's Hud. Alayhi salatu was salam, a proper Muslim name. I don't, uh, you know, it's not very common, but I do know a few called Hud. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all good names, blessed names, give us all goodness. I mean. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, As for Thamud, and Salih alayhi salam was sent to them. We guided them. But they preferred blindness over guidance. Meaning we sent them the guidance, but they turned a blind eye. Just like we do sometimes out of weakness. But we do not do it out of defiance of Allah. And this is a point of hope. Whenever we've sinned, we never ever have sinned out of defiance of Allah, I hope. But it's only out of human weakness. And this is why we say, oh Allah, I made a mistake. I did wrong. I sinned, Ya Allah. I went against you, Ya Allah. Forgive me. Why do we say forgive me? Because we're not defying. If you defy, it means I did this. Now let's see what you're going to do. That's called defiance. A'udhu Billah. May Allah protect us. None of us do that. Because we know Allah exists. And we know that we are answerable absolutely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are at His mercy. So Thamud, Allah says, we sent them the guidance. When Allah says we guided them, it means we sent them the guidance, we gave it to them. But they preferred guidance, they preferred blindness over the guidance. So the thunderbolt of humiliating punishment seized them for what they used to earn. And we saved those who believed and used to fear Allah. They used to be conscious of their maker. We saved them. They were saved completely. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who believe. My mothers and sisters, what a beautiful lesson. Just for us to take heed and you know to tap us on the shoulder to say, hang on, start heading in this particular direction. Or if we've already started heading in that direction, then a tapping to say, keep going, keep going inshallah. Until the day you die, just keep going. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us, my mothers and sisters. We really thank Allah for giving us the chance to go through these powerful, beautiful verses that the kuffar of Quraysh deny. We do not deny them. We accept them. We believe in them completely. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us paradise in return. We ask Allah to bless us and our offspring to protect us across the globe. Wallahi the Muslimin are struggling and suffering. Whatever their problems are, wherever they are, may Allah subhanahu 
subhanahu wa ta'ala create ease for them. As we're speaking, there is chaos in so many countries, including Pakistan, Iraq, Syria, so many other places. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all ease. Even Nigeria, subhanallah, struggling. And may Allah make us from amongst those who can always preserve the peace and stability of our nations. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us cherish and appreciate what we have in terms of these gifts. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilaha.